Okay, so we've got a question here revolving this three-dimensional shape. Um, it's a prism of some description. So we've got a trapezium face and the depth is y. And what we're looking for is to find y this side here. And y will be in terms of x. Then we're looking to find the surface area of all the faces. Then calculate the minimum value of all the surface area. So we calculate that and then we'll prove that that surface area we calculate is a minimum. So how do we start? So find y. We're given that the volume is 9600. So volume equals 9600. And what we want to find is the area of this side here, this prism. So area of a, B, C, D. So how are we going to calculate that? Well, as this looks like a trapezium, we take the average of the two lengths of the sides and multiply it by its height. That will give us our area of the side A, B, C, D. So we've got 9x and 6x. So we've got a half of 9x plus 6x and then multiply that by 4x. So 9x plus 6x is 15x. 15 times 4 is 60. That's 60x squared and half of that is 30x squared. So that's the area of ABCD. But we've got the volume here which is 9600. So if we get this 30x squared and multiplied by y, that will give us 9,600. So what we can say is that 30x squared multiplied by y equals 9,600. Okay, so now to get y on its own, we'll just divide 30x squared on both sides. So then we'll get y equals 9,600 divided by 30x squared. And now we can simplify this, we can cancel out one of the zeros, and 160 divided by 3 is 320. So y equals 320 over x squared. So that's our y. Let's write that in here. 320 over x squared. So that's the solution to part A. Part B is find the surface area. So surface area, we need to find all the faces, sum them all up, and then substitute y in for the y value. So we already know the front face and the back face because they'll be the same trapezium. So we'll have, let's just start, let's plot this off. So let's just say, let's go here, surface area. So we've got a 30x squared twice. So we just write these out individually. 30x squared plus 30x squared. And as it's got six faces, we should have six ones to plug in here. Now we look at this one, CB, uh, CGBF here. So we've got 6x and y. So therefore that one there will be 6xy. And then We'll have this side here, which is A, E, H, D. Now that one is 9X and Y, so that's 9XY. Then we've got the bases, which are 4X and Y. So that's the base there, so that's 4XY. And then on the top, we've got a 5X and a Y, so that's plus 5XY. Okay, right, add all these up, see what we got. So that becomes, so I'll call the surface area S, in six, sticking with the question here, surface area S. 30x squared plus 30x squared is 60x squared. And then we've got all these x and y's, so we can just add these up. 6 plus 9 is 15, 19, 24.
Okay, now we know what y is, y equals 320 over x squared. So that equals 60x squared plus 24x multiplied. Now just substitute this value in here for y, 320 over x squared. Okay, right, we can go even further and simplify this up. So that x and one of these x's will cancel out. That just become one. So then we're left with 24 times 320. So 320 times 24 is uh, 2880. So 60x squared plus 24 times 32 is 2880, sorry, 20, 24 times 320, let's do that here. 320, 24, so we've got 6, 400, plus 4, 30, 4 times 220, that's 1280. That gives us 7680. Plus 7680 over X. Okay, so that's our surface area. So we can write this in here now. Surface area S equals 60 x squared plus 7680 over x. So that's our surface area with respect to x. <coughs> okay, right, calculate the minimum value for s. That's what we need to do now. So what could be the possible minimum value of the surface area even though we don't know what y is. Now to do that, all the different values of y, if you put that on a graph, that's going to make this kind of shape. And what we need to find is, if this here is our value for S, and this here is our value for X, we need to find where the minimum value of S is. So therefore, <clears throat> what we need to do is find the derivative of this, this value S, and that will then give us our minimum value. So we want it at, actually at its zero point, i.e. where the derivative is zero. So, let's find that in here. So that's part two. So now let's do derivative of s. So what we're looking for is ds with respect to x. Okay, and now what we're looking for is to integrate 60x squared plus 7680 over x. So actually, let's bring this down. Let's bring this down over here. ds dx. Okay, so let's take the derivative of this with respect to x. So 60x squared, multiply uh, the 60 by the 2, that gives us 120x. So that's the uh, x comes down by 1, so x to the power of 1, so 120x to the power of 1. And then we've got 7680 divided by x. So then all we do there is do minus sign at the front and then bring this power up by one. So basically what we've got here is 7680 x to the minus one. <clears throat> so we bring the minus one to the front. So minus one times 7680 and then multiply by x to the minus one minus one. So that equals minus 7680 over x squared, if you put it on the bottom. That x squared there is to the minus two. So let's write that in there now. So that plus becomes a minus, 7680 over x squared. Okay, let's just cross that out. Let's put that off there. Okay, so now how do we calculate what our minimum value of x is? Well, what we're looking for is 120x minus 7680 over x squared equals zero. So if we multiply all the terms by x squared, then bring the 7680 over here, we should have a chance of finding out what that is. So x squared is here and 120x is here. So multiply this by x squared. That just cancels out, so we end up with minus 7680. Multiply this by x squared, 
zero times x squared, still zero. I multiply this by x squared, we get 120 x cubed. So now what we get is 120 x cubed equals minus 7680, bring it to the other side, we get positive 7680. Okay, so now x cubed, let's bring this up here, x cubed equals 7680 divided by 120. Okay, just divide both sides by 120, that's what we get. So that one there just gets on its own. So then, what is this? 7680 divided by 120. We'll cancel that out, cancel that out. 12s into 768 is 64. So x cubed equals 64. x equals cube root 64. Cube root 64, 4 4s are 16, 16 times 4 is 64. So x equals 4. So that's what the x value will be, but we still need to plug it into this equation here to see what we get. So let's just cover this graph out now, we don't need that. So now we get s equals, so plug it in the values for x equals 4, 60 times 4 squared plus 7680 over 4. Okay, divide this by 4. So 7680 divided by 4, that cancels out, and to that becomes 1, and then 4s into that go 1, carry 3, 9, 2, 0. So 60 times 4 squared is 60 times 16 equals 960. 16 6 is a 96, put a zero on. So we get 960 plus 1920. So that equals 2880. So the minimum value for S is going to be 2880 centimetres squared. That's our answer there. Surface area S we got here, so we'll leave that one in there. I want to be right that one out over there. That'll be fine there. And now we need to prove that S is a minimum. So is this really the minimum? So to do that, what we do is we take the derivative again of ds dx. So what we're now looking for is d squared s over d x squared. So Take derivative of this. This is what we're looking to take the derivative of. Derivative of 120x is just 120. Take the derivative of this. So we've got minus 7680 x to the minus 2. Bring the minus 2 to the front. We get minus 2 times minus 7680 and then subtract by 1, so x to the minus 3. So then that gives us minus 2 times minus 7680 becomes plus 1, 5, 1, 2, 1, 5, 3, 60 over x cubed. Now does, what we want to show is that this is greater than 0. Well, 120, that's always greater than 0, it's not going to move. The big positive integer on the numerator, the denominator is x cubed. Now x cubed could be negative if x is a negative number, i.e. minus 2 cubed is minus 8. But as x is distance, it makes no sense for x to be negative. So x, x is always positive. So therefore, d2s dx squared is larger than zero, so therefore that is definitely a minimum. Okay.